Welcome back to Miniature Mashup. Today we'll be continuing with the process of stripping and repainting my classic HeroQuest miniatures. If you want to see me strip the skeletons and orcs, those are two separate videos and the link for those is in the description below. Today is going to be a little different as I no longer have the entire gargoyle model, just the head. But that's okay since that's honestly the best part of this miniature. I know it's a classic, but the original body is low detail, strange proportions, and dated sculpting. I want to see if I can't bring back some of that first edition Warhammer Bloodthirster energy with some kit bashing using Games Workshop bits and some other stuff too. So let's start by putting my bits on the table so you can get a good look at them. I've got the head of our gargoyle here, I've got a destroyer hero clicks for our body, I've got an undead shield. And I've got an orc choppa, which I'll be choppaing up to use as a piece of our new gargoyle. Cut the wrist off of our uh, hero clicks destroyer armor and taking the helmet off. Technically, it's just the helmet, as this is sort of enchanted armor and not a. You guys don't care. I don't know why I'm going into detail about a uh, character from the Thor movie. I'm going to pin that. Orc Choppa on there, so as you see, I've got a little pin vise going in, and I'm scraping any mold lines off of the shield. I'm going to trim the other hand down so that undead shield will fit on there. There's some spikes on top of the hand that don't need to be there, and the hand's a little fatter. Dropping that gargoyle head into a can of acetone, swishing it around, pulling it out, cleaning it with a toothbrush. It's pretty good. There is a little bit of caked in white paint in the eye that I just pick out with a tweezer nice and gently. Try not to mess the plastic up in there. But when it's done, I get about 99% of that paint off there. Then we're gonna drop the destroyer into the acetone and just clean his butt up with a toothbrush. Something I like to do with myself if company's coming over. The cool thing about the Destroyer is it's made of that clear Heroclix plastic, and that stuff is really acetone resistant. So you can really just let it sit in there, which is nice because the metallic paint is particularly tough to get off. But I'm guessing it's because it's got metallic speckles in there that don't care about acetone and are impervious to it. I'm going to pin that work chopa on there, and this is what I'm using a very thin brass rod. Just stick that in the wrist, and once he's in there, you can do a little puppeteering of your miniature if you like. You can make your hero clicks dance if you want to. I'm just going to clip that off with a fine wire cutter. Always cut a little longer than you think you might need, because you can always trim it down. If you cut it too short, then you got to start over. And I didn't want to do that, so there it is. It's still a little too long. Trim it down, but we'll get it just right and do a little dry fit looks pretty good proportionally it's a perfect fit which is excellent when it's all painted up you really can't tell that's been kit bashed on there other than the fact that it is you know an orc weapon <laughs> what is clearly not a games workshop model and i'll be uh, shaving down the feet on this guy just to make him fit a little better onto his base because they are kind of rounded and it is a sort of smooth plastic I also like to shave my own feet so I can fit in a little better. It's just sort of a social anxiety thing I deal with. I'll be roughing up the top of the base with this Dremel tool here, just scuffing it up a little. Again, you know, rougher surfaces tend to bond better with adhesives. And the adhesive I'm using is actually a $40 tube of industrial adhesive from Whirlpool that I got at the thrift store for 50 cents. I don't mind bragging about this. this stuff's kind of excellent. And if I ever catch this again, grab it. If you see something like this, grab it. You're certainly not going to want to pay the price for it <laughs> brand new. But if you can see it, get it for a bargain. Do. It's very good stuff. Just be careful of the fumes. I'll be using that same adhesive to put the shield on. No pinning necessary for that. I've got such a good fit on that hand and such a good adhesive. And I'll be dropping them down on the base and I'm gonna let that sit for a little while and cure before I really do anything else with it use that same adhesive to put the chopper on by the way the chopper 
and also the same adhesive to put this cork onto the base, which is really probably overkill. I usually just white, use white PVA glue to glue cork to uh, plastic, but you know this is a little stronger, and why play around? Although I will bust out the white PVA glue to adhere our craft sand, which is just acts as our flock. It's pretty good, especially when you're using a bigger mini like this. I think it has a nice look, and you know the price is right. Lots and lots of footage of me dropping that on. Now let's get some sand on this beach. That is one sandy beach. Uh, yeah, let's just dump it all back on there. Make sure we got a good coverage. Tip this can lid over. It's a lid from a jar of pickles to catch the sand and to pour the sand and to become one with the sand. Then I prime it in black. I don't want to prime it in black. That's just what I have on hand. Primer's so expensive these days. I can't, at least I can't find the cheap stuff at the dollar store. Which reminds me, donate to my GoFundMe, please, or become a Patreon member, or buy something off of my eBay store. The link for all three of those is in the description below. I'd love to go back to priming things in gray or white, but you folks just don't care. So now I'm dry brushing some colors onto our new gargoyle. Uh, there's just a bunch of layering happening here. I'm starting with sort of a dark brown over the black and just working our way up to sort of a turner yellow for highlights. Really, we're just doing sort of a brown to yellow gradient, low to high. A couple of spots here that I might pick up with a little bit of white or just slightly off white. There isn't a ton to narrate here as I'm just sort of painting. I start from the inside out, just doing the body. First, sort of the fleshy bits, and then now I'm putting in the shadows with some brown washes from Games Workshop. Probably that sepia wash they have, or it might even be Nolan Oil. Actually, I think it was Nolan Oil because this is already such a dark model. Getting inside that mouth, getting inside the eyes. Like I said, we're just going to do this section first as the colors are the same and it's all kind of one thing. Just picking out the detail before we begin on what is kind of his armor, kind of raised sections, his weapons, his shields, things like that, the helmet. We'll kind of get those all together because those I'd also do in their own color scheme, which plays off nicely. I've got this sort of yellow off purple will be our palette for this project. And I'm starting with a very dark purple. I think it's called like Dianazine purple. I just have a ton of it and I, I like it a lot. It's very rich, but it's so dark when you put it over black primer, it's, uh, you almost can't detect the purple. You really have to build it up before it shows up or you just mix it with a lavender, which is what I ended up doing to get a couple of gradients that I like. got these sort of striped, armored, studded things going down his legs and arms, doing the base of those in the purple, and I'm bringing the studs out with a little bit of a white undercoat before I color them in to sort of match the rest of him. I think it's a pretty good effect. His base, of course, is going to be a brown and then a cinnamon and then uh, some highlights, dry brushing with Turner Yellow. And the shield is just sort of a series of purples and light blue dry brushing. A little bit of a dark blue wash for the shadows on that. Now the axe, I wanted to get kind of a molten effect. I pull it off okay. It's a little too textured to do well and smoothly. There's a lot of recesses to work around. I mean, I'm sure somebody who's a better painter than I could nail it, but I think I did all right. And to start with, I put a white undercoat because trying to build any kind of a gradient over black is a headache. So, start with that, and then we get kind of a dark, rich red. And then it's just glazing different layers of orange over it. Those take a while to build up. 
multiple coats, multiple coats, because we do want it to sort of fade out. We want it to stay red at the extremes and get more orange towards the center where I have the heat building up from. Again, those glazes tend to be very thin, and so it started to pool in the recesses, which isn't a bad effect because the reason on something like this, you kind of want an inverted look as the light is coming from the inside. So if you get those resource, resource ugh, if you get those recesses lighter, it's fine. And I'm just putting some dark brown on some of the raised bits. Guys, how'd it turn out? What do you think? Does it look all right? As always, thank you for watching Miniature Mashup. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope we can see you again soon.